Uh, so, Ali, could you start the recording? All right, so we are now officially recording. Okay. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about using graphics in Word. And um, I just wondered if anyone's got any specific questions before we get uh, launch into that. It's one of those things that, um, see, using graphics. So. If you do have a question, you want to type it into the Q&A right now, it's a specific thing that you'd like to make sure that we cover, you type it into the Q&A right now while I do our introduction, that'd be great. Um, so using graphics does really enhance your documents and quite often in something like a thesis, you do need them, you need tables and things like that, um, you may need figures. So it's important that you use them, but they can be awfully fiddly. Um, I do have some tips for how to make them not in any way fiddly, to make them really easy uh, to use. But we'll also have a look at some of the more advanced options that we could do. Um, and we'll have a look at how you could add in a table of contents or a table of your, of your uh, pictures as well and add annotation to them. OK. All right. I'm just going to, because I'm now going to start using my computer, I'm just going to turn my video off. And there we go. Stop video. OK. All right, so I do have this. What are anchors and how do they work? Yes, we are going to be talking about anchors. Anchors are actually um, the bane of our existence. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, they are actually kind of what makes things hard. I'm going to show you a way to add graphics into your documents that don't actually use the anchors. Because um, what the anchor is about, it's about where it is, um, <sighs> It's where it's attaching your document. It, it's where it's attaching the file um, to inside your document, um, and they can be really useful if you are doing sort of graphic design. So if you're designing something like a newsletter or something like that, then they can be really handy. Uh, but really in the kind of documents you're probably producing you don't need those and if you are designing a newsletter you know what guys there are millions of really great newsletter templates out there on the web um, so i would just use those if i wouldn't actually design my own template i would um, adapt one that i would found on the uh, just through the um, search within word itself so i hope that answers that question but we'll certainly be coming in um, to looking at more stuff all right Okay, so let's get stuck into Word. So I've got my uh, document here about our solar system. I've put in this cover page here. Uh, and we're coming through and I want to add some pictures into here. So let's just see, let's say that I wanted to add in a picture just here. So I can just hit enter there and I would go into my insert tab and I can go pictures. And from here, hang on, let me just, sorry, I've just got a bar in the way. Let me just move that out of the way. Um, so I've got some images here. So I'm just going to double click on that image or I can single click it and click insert. And that's just going to pop that image in. So there we go. I've now got a picture uh, on my document. But as you can see, it's gone away from Mercury. So maybe I wanted to keep it with Mercury. Uh, and then I've got this little button here that's showing me some layout options. Do I want to do in line with text or do I want to do text wrapping? Do I want to make it square or tight? Now, what happens when I start doing these things? This is when that kind of anchor appears. So can you see that I've now got that anchor? Okay. And that's because I've changed it to some text wrapping and I've got move with text or fixed position on page okay so that's saying to me do I want to move it as you see you've got a little info button there so it allows your object to move on the page as text is added or deleted or it fixes it in position in the page whether or not I add or delete so I've now got that little anchor there and this is where things get complicated because I can now move this around and we have that really annoying thing that can happen which is that when I move it I move it a tiny bit and things move out of um, whack. Yeah, have people had that where you try and move it a little bit and it moves onto a different page and things like that. Um, and that's all because I've chosen these options, this anchor. Let me show you a different way that I could do this. Now, one of the things that I would do, particularly if you're troubleshooting an image, so if you're troubleshooting an image or you're troubleshooting any kind of formatting, is what you need to do is you need to turn these paragraph markers on, okay? So this paragraph marker shows me what's going on in my document. So this will show me that where my anchors are, it will show me where I've got this little, so remember I hit enter because that's where I wanted my image to go. So if I now try and drag my image 
up to there, that's going to be really tricky and difficult. Yeah, and I have to do lots of scrolling and trying to move it and it doesn't want to go. And now it's jumped in the middle of Mercury and ah, it's all really difficult. Um, if I go back to taking this to be in line with text, one of the things that I've got going on here is now I've got it going into Mercury. Okay, So I've got it associated with a particular I've got it in that particular line. If I wanted to drag it down, I can now drag it down to here. No, it's not going to let me. Hang on. Drag it down there. So I can now see what's going on. So you can see there that I've managed to drag it and I've now got it associated with that bit of mercury. Okay. So that's why I like doing this in line with text. Um, the other thing I like to do as well is, let me come, let me scroll down a little bit. Uh, okay, so let me come down to here. Let's say that I've got something that I want to put in here. I want to put another image in here. So if I hit enter and I go insert and I go pictures from here, let's pick a different picture and wait for it to appear. So there we go, I've got another man with a computer. Excellent. Uh, so in here, let's say that actually I wanted it to stay with Mercury, uh, with, sorry, this Callisto. So it's gone onto another page, but I actually want it to stick with Callisto. So in this case, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to Control Z and Control Z and undo. So that time what I did was I hit enter and that put in what we call um, a line break. Like I said, so that put in a, in a paragraph break rather. Okay, so when I hit enter and that's that little symbol that you can see there. So you can see this symbol, um, that is a paragraph break. If I go back, if this time I use shift enter instead, you see how I now get a different sort of symbol here? Okay, so you see I've got this little tiny line and that little sort of tiny um, arrow there, that means that I've done what's called a non-breaking line space. So a non-breaking, yeah, non-breaking line space. Yeah, I think that's what it's called anyway. Um, and essentially it's when I've hit shift enter. Now what that does is it says this part here is not a new paragraph. It is part of the same paragraph, but I want it to appear on a new line. So now when I do that, I go insert picture and I insert my picture again. And you see how it keeps it with the last line. So what it's done there is it said, um, I want you to keep this with that part of that paragraph. So now I have a gap there, but the last line sticks with the, um, actually with the picture. So that's how I've managed to do that. So that's how I like to insert pictures. And this works well for me. So when I'm working with pictures quite a lot of the time, what I'm doing is I'm writing what we call quick reference guides. So I'm writing instructional text for people and I have it numbered. And this really helps if you've got a numbered list. So if I've got numbered um, list, and this can help with you with your, um, if you're using numbered styles as well. So I'm using a numbered list. If I hit enter, because uh, I want to put my picture next, it numbers the picture, but I don't want it to number the picture. So adding this says this is still part of this of that same paragraph with the same number. I'm hoping that makes sense. All right. Okay. So let's have a look at. Uh, I'm just going to add another picture. I'm just going to show you that again. So let's say that um, down here I want to add in a picture and I want to make sure it stays with this paragraph. Um, the, another advantage of that is I'll show you in a moment is uh, so again I'm going to say shift enter so shift enter then produces that little mark there and, and from here I'm going to say insert and I've got another picture. Ah shall we do you guess do you want to guess what this picture is of? I think it might be of a computer. Oh, there it is. It's a woman using a computer this time. So there we go. Um, now, one of the advantages, another advantage of me using that shift enter is if I now wanted to say, oh, I've got these in the wrong order. So let's say that I've actually got this, um, you know, I've actually should have these the other way around. So let's move uh, Uranus from here. So and here I can grab this and I can move it up to there. And because I've done that, it's taken the picture with it. So can you see how it's moved that whole paragraph and it has included the picture as well, okay? Now where I've got my one with Mercury, which I've got on its own line, if I take Mercury 
and move Mercury to there. Uh, is it going to make a liar out of me? Ah, excellent. It's now starting to do that. Okay, so I'm using version 2016. So that must be a new feature in 2016 is it's moved that with it. Uh, you might find if you're using older versions of Word that it won't move that picture with the paragraph because it doesn't understand that figure is associated with it. Um, they've obviously got a little bit more sophisticated. Ah, oh, it's great when you know that Microsoft are listening to feedback from their customers and that there are reasons uh, why we get upgrades. It's not just for the sake of it. Uh, that they release new versions. Excellent. Good. Okay. Um, the next thing that I want to do then is to actually add um, uh, some information. Um, so actually what I'll do here as well, let me just show, you see here you've got these positions. So I can choose to say I want this in line with text and all this. And this is when we get those anchor problems. Uh, and you've also got this wrap text option. So where do you want the picture to sit on the page? And how do you want to wrap, how do you want text to behave in relation to the picture? This all comes down to what we've got in here is this more layout options. So with this, I've got here um, the options to say, I want this picture to always appear at the top of this page or something like that. Now, I don't want to go into this in too much detail because I would imagine that mostly when you're using pictures, you want them to be associated with the text that they're with. So this kind of idea about, um, I always want this to appear in a certain position on the page is probably not going to be useful for you. That's more useful for, if, as I say, you're doing newsletters and so on. And again, I'm going to iterate to you, if you're doing newsletters, just go to the file. Oops, it's not going to like that. I'll come back to that. If you're doing newsletters, go file, um, go new, and then search for online templates and search for newsletter. Uh, and you're going to come up with lots and lots of ones, okay? Um, so there are at least 18 ones here. You can then go and do, so let's have a look at some newsletters. So you've got lots of different ones here um, that you can use. Like I say, I want nature ones. So I've got a nature one and I've got a holiday snowman design set. Oh, that's for publisher. Ah, anyway, anyway, um, where was I at? Here we go, more layout options. And then we have this text wrapping as well. If you just do in line with text as your text wrapping option, um, you do not have to worry about that little anchor thing. So that is my top tip for you is just always make, just don't bother with text wrapping. Okay. Um, and then this is about the size of it. Okay. And so the size of my actual picture. I can resize the picture just by dragging or I can resize the picture by actually going in and saying I want it to be five centimeters tall or what have you okay all right um, and if you're happy for those to just sit there if you want them sitting in line with your text um, so if you want them sitting next to text in the text to wrap around that's when you have to have complications you have to decide whether you think it's worth it or not personally I don't think it's worth it all right okay um, other things that we can do with pictures is we can come in here and if they're not particular, you know, if it's, uh, we want to make it slightly brighter or we want to make, change the contrast and that sort of thing we can do. So it's a picture we've taken ourselves. We can also, if we want to, we can make things um, sort of black and white. Uh, we can make things um, colorful. There we go. Uh, we can do whatever we want. Uh, let's just hit on the, uh, uh, I can do yet yeah, more variations and so on. Uh, whoops. What I can also do from here is I can say reset picture. There we go. Uh, I can come in and do artistic effects. So we can uh, pixelate it. Uh, we can do all sorts of funky and make it look like a photocopy. So there's all sorts of things you could do as well. If you're just having a bit of fun with a project, you can do those things. Don't forget, you've always got the reset picture. So I've got there my options. I can reset the size as well or just reset from that color effect that I did there. You also have the ability, a lot of people don't know this, is that you can change the picture. So from here, I can either come and right click on the picture and say change picture, or I can come here and I can click change picture and that would allow me to go uh, and swap that picture out with something else. The reason that can be useful is that if you have set up the size and positioning of it, it's a way of you being able to change that picture without having to come in and, um, you know, and redo all that resizing and things like that as well. So that can be quite handy um, if you want to start working with pictures, but you know you've not got the picture that you want to use. So if you've got um, 
uh, a figure or something or a graph that you're putting in inserting as a picture but you think you might want to change it later is that it's a really easy way to do that is that change picture okay um, other things you can do here I'll just show you this because it is a bit fun it's probably not going to work on this pitch it's not the right sort of picture for it to work on but we can remove the back Ground. So I can just have the women, oh look at that, and I'm going to mark areas to remove, let's just, oh is it not going to let me remove that area there as well please, and remove this area here, oh let's put, let's put that back, there we go, and then I keep changes, and there we go, it's, uh, it's a bit rough and ready, um, but if you don't have Photoshop and you pick the right kind of picture, it is a way for you to quickly and easily remove the background without having to get involved in Photoshop. Uh, and again, I can always reset the picture. Okay, there we go. Um, what else might we want to do with this picture? Well, I might want to come in here with my reference and from my references, I might want to insert a caption. So I've got there my caption. So this says it is figure one and I could say woman with laptop, okay. Uh, and the label there is picture. I can change that picture. It might be an equation or a table as well. So I've got there woman and I position it below the selected item or I can do it above, um, but below seems pretty standard. Um, and I can exclude the label from the caption. So where that just means where it says, that at the moment it says figure one, woman with laptop. I can exclude that if I want to, okay? And uh, I can say, okay to that. Whoops. Um, so let me just go into there and say that is misspelt. Woman with a laptop. Okay. So let's say that I want to um, have a look at different things. Um, so from here, you see I've got my navigation pane open. So I've got my navigation pane open. Uh, you can open that just by hitting Control F to do a find, um, or I'm pretty sure it'll be on the view menu because it's something you can see. Yep, there it is, navigation pane. So there we go. Um, I can search the document for certain things, but you'll need, so I've got this search for, dip for other things. So back in the day, back in, oh gosh, 2003, I think it was. Um, I think they took it away in 2010. It might even have been 2013. On your scroll bar, you would have had this option to, uh, to navigate via graphics and tables and things as well as just through pages but now that's gone into the find bit so that little drop down there is I can say find graphics and that will show me where all my graphics are so that's a really quick easy way for you to go in and go right I'm now ready to start adding my captions if you hadn't if you'd forgotten to add your captions when you inserted the pictures so it's just a nice way you've not got to scroll through and find them so again from here it is references so I'm going to insert caption and this caption here is man with server and say okay so there you go I've got now man with server and again I can find graphics so my search has been paused but I can just find the next one so this one here I can say oh, I've still got that woman but I want to change that so if I want I can go remember I can go format change picture browse I know an insert pictures right just a little word here insert pictures it comes up and says hey do you want to do a big image search um copyright people you would not be inserting things directly from the internet into your documents that's all I'm going to say about that oh no that's not the one that I wanted it must have been the very first one there we go. I should really name my pictures. That's a top tip as well, is rather than leaving your images as having just numbers, if you name them, um, that's a really handy thing to do. Uh, so from here, remember it's references. I'm going to insert my caption. And this is other man with server. And uh, I'm just going to put a space in there. Say OK to that. Okay, all right. So that is all of my images I have now captioned. Now, what other thing that I might want to do is if I go up to the top of my document, uh, I've got my cover page in here. But my, what I might want to do is if I just do Control Enter, Control Enter adds a page break, and I can tell it's added a page break because look, it tells me I've got a page break, and the reason it tells me that is because I have these things turned on. If I do not have these things turned on, I might wonder why I have a blank page. OK, 
okay but what I'm going to do from here is again with my references I've got here a table of um, contents but I can also insert a table of figures so I'm just going to insert a table of contents as well because just to show you how easy that is that is my table of contents that I've added there okay um, uh, and that's just picking up I'm sure you all know this that's just picking up on the styles so then I'm going to come down here and this time I'm going to insert a table of figures. So I'm going to just do, yeah, uh, that one looks good. I don't need to any options. I'm quite happy with that. So I just go there. Okay. And there you go. I might want to come in here and just uh, type in there. There you go. Uh, and this allows people as well to, to um, navigate your document too. Okay, so that's adding in your table of figures. Um, and oh, yes, I was going to show you a top tip is if I come in here uh, and those images there, just as I was saying, it'd be really useful if you actually like label them something. So I can right click on that and just say rename, and I can come in here and I can say man with server over shoulder and hit enter and there you go I've now named them it is a really good idea to name your things all right uh, okay uh, now Ali has just reminded me that there's a cool thing you can do uh, is that the format painter will work on images as well So if I go home and I'm going to go with my format painter, so I've got that selected. I've double clicked my format painter. If I come down here and do that, um, that should also work then with the way that you've positioned it. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Are there any questions? Okay, so let me just run over my top tips for you again. So top tip number one is make sure that you have your paragraph markers turned on when you're working with images. Uh, my top tip number two, it looks like actually my top tip number two, my shift enter, we don't need to do anymore uh, unless you're using a numbered list. I would still do it if I was doing a numbered list. How about I demonstrate why, why I'm saying that? So if I'm, let's say that I wanted to associate something with this um, goodbye, if I hit enter, it makes it into a, um, another list. Yeah. Uh, um, but if I just undo, it thinks it's another list. Whereas if I go shift enter, that's a way that I can then insert an image into a numbered list. Um, why don't I actually display it? Show you what I'm talking about. Okay. And I can then resize that. Uh, but that just means that then um, it not only does it line up nicely with my list here, but it also means that it doesn't do another number. Um, okay, so that's my that's a top tip. Another top tip was always just leave it with the layout as in line with text. So if you do any other layout than in line with text, if you use this position button here or you use the wrap text and do something else, that's when you get that little anchor, and that little anchor is going to cause you pain unless you are very determined and you know what you're doing. So my suggestion to you is, is just leave it in line with text. Um, if you are having issues with that, that's when you need to get into looking at these sorts of positions and go and understanding that what's happening is, it's looking at the alignment. Is it relative to a column? Is it relative to the page? Is it relative to the paragraph? Is it relative to the margins and so on? So you need to understand that you would be coming in here and playing with these if you want to have a very precise location for something, which is why I say, leave it in line with text, okay? Just leave it on its own little, and leave it on its own little paragraph marker. So just give it its own little paragraph marker um, and uh, leave it in line with text. The other little thing that I showed you is uh, we've got here 
the find from my navigation pane we've got find graphics so that's the way for you to go through your document um, and add in so your captions so from here that's references so that is not on the format that is on the references um, so you insert captions you also insert your table of figures from here and with your format and um, don't forget that change picture can be really useful so if you've already got your picture exactly where you like it and the size that you want it is use that change picture all right i can see i can have it uh, i have a question here what's the point of the format painter yep so if let's say that i had done um i wanted to go with board around my image um, you know, or I wanted to have a reflection on my image, or let's say I wanted to do this one here, I quite like this one here. So that's got now got a picture on it. And um, so if I from here, then double click on my format painter. Uh, and so that should now, yeah, I've now got my format painter. Let me go back to finding my graphics. Has it now let me keep my format painter? Yes, yeah, so I come down here and I click on there. Yeah, does that make sense? So it's when you've done that kind of formatting find graphics let's go to my next one um oh. let's go to my next one so it's down there there you go so can you see that's done that sorry i didn't do a very good example earlier on uh, but so with all of that formatting there um, you do have all these picture effects you can put borders you can put shadows you can put um uh, um reflections sorry I knew there was another word I was looking for uh, there are some pre-built ones in here um, I, I would stick with the simple ones they can be good to put a board around them um, particularly if you're using figures and those sorts of things so you can use these pre-built ones uh, or you can come in and just do um, your own so say I want a picture border of it being red um, uh, and I want to make sure that I can change the weight on that and make it sort of a slightly thinner one uh, you can do things like you can say I want it to be dashed I'm not sure why you'd want that on a border um, and so on so that's what that one is. I hope that answers that question okay so those are my top tips any more questions Um, so earlier on, I'm not getting any more questions there. Uh, so just before I launch the poll, um, yeah, Ali has just pointed out to me that when I was showing you resizing, I maybe want to talk about that a little bit more detail because when you resize, I use these corner bits. So when you're resizing your picture, you need to use these corner bits because if you use that corner bit to resize them, it keeps the aspect ratio. Uh, whereas if you use these ones at the side, it doesn't necessarily. See how that's now changed the aspect ratio of that? Whoops. Oh, you can also flip them the other way around, by the way. So you can also reverse the picture. Um, so uh, another thing to note is you can actually do that as well through this little button here. Um, this is the advanced layout button. Remember anywhere where you see these little ones, it actually shows you some more things. That was also, it's just another tab actually from this more layout options. Um, and we had the size there. We have this lock aspect ratio. Okay, so that lock aspect ratio should um, help you with uh, doing that. Also, if I do move from here, if I, no, it's the, sh is it the shift key or the control key. It's one of the keys, it's gonna stop it from doing that as well. But if you just always use these ones, that stops that being a problem. Um, or if you use these buttons here, as long, these, these resize will work as long as that little thing is ticked to say lock aspect ratio. Okay. Um, you also have the button here to reset. So if all goes horribly wrong, if you do have um, pictures in your document where somebody has done that to them, you can always reset them. All right. Oh, I have a question. Um, so sometimes when using the corner to resize, the aspect ratio is lost with drawing items. Can you prevent this? Um, yeah, you should be able to with that. Um, 
if make sure if it's a draw if it's an item that's drawn so if it's grouped with anything or you've created it yourself from a drawing item then you might find that that um uh that it's undicked that lock aspect ratio so you just need to come in um reset it lock the aspect ratio at that point and then that should work for you um, the alternative is actually from here with that lock aspect ratio if you can change this with the percentages um, and if you've got lock aspect ratio that should then um, keep it right keep it the same or you can even do it from here and say i want that to be 90 and then you can change when you hit tab so what i did there is i hit tab to move it into the width and it had already changed the width to 90 but if it hasn't you could do that manually as well i hope that answers that question So we do really value your um, feedback. Uh, so I will just quickly launch this poll. And there we go. Launch polling. There we go. Um, so please let us know what you think. Um, also, don't forget to uh, contact us. Um, yeah, so you can get in touch with us at it.training.edu.au. Uh, and from there, um, just let us know what you would like to see. So the ones that we've got... Um, coming up is we have got four steps to inbox heaven and we've also got a great thing about um, PowerPoint and the amazing stuff that PowerPoint now it could do so it's not just about presenting and um, PowerPoint is actually a really cool piece of kit that you've got on your desktop um, okay all right so I'm going to poll uh, I'm going to close that poll uh, just in another 10 seconds or so uh, in the meantime if you have any more questions please uh, please just um, feel free to write them down. Uh, if you are frantically writing a question, maybe just raise your hand so we know not to end the webinar. And I'm closing that poll. Thank you for voting everyone in five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Well, that recording will go up on our YouTube channel very soon. Um, thank you very much for coming. As I say, just raise your hand if you are frantically typing a question. No, great. Okay, well, thanks everyone, and we will see you next time.